Hey everybody, I'm Ray Solomon here with my co-host and husband Jake Green hey everyone. and our resident Nashville bachelor Dustin Summers hey. and this is the third week of us previewing the Love is Stupid podcast which is premiering on Valentine's Day of 2020 so uh, we're less than a month away now and we are doing our bachelor breakdown. So, uh, to recap this episode, Peter had his date with Victoria P. We saw Demi come back around and get the girls uh, pillow fighting. And then, of course, all the Alaya drama of what just happened. So, let's dive in. Should we just start at the beginning? I mean, if there's any way to turn it around, it's a lingerie pillow fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you would have thought the same thing for the uh, the pool party, which we'll get to that when we get there. There was a lack of pool in the party. A lot of lameness in the pool party. Well. <laughs> That's true. That was a rough pool party. <laughs> anyway, so the Victoria P date is kind of where this episode started. Yeah, so Dustin was really happy because Victoria P is Dustin's pick. So what did you think of the date? I think that we'll get to a lot of our thoughts on Victoria P, but she obviously had a good night. She had a good week uh, out there. She did. Mixed in with all the other chaos that was going on. And I think the thing that stuck out about the Victoria P date was this was kind of, who knows if it was in sequential order or not, but this pretty much came on the heels of all the chaos from last weekend with all the silly champagne gate stuff that's been going on. And I think you can kind of see that she, the, the difference between chaos and calm, that Victoria P, was just, she's just calm. She's just easy to be around, and you can tell that Peter likes that. I think it was nice to get to know her a little bit more, too, on a deeper level. It sounds like she really had some struggles growing up, but she seems to have handled that really well and come out of that the other side with a really kind, caring heart, so that's nice. It's one of the best parts about the one-on-ones, is this is your opportunity to be honest, be genuine about your past, and, and allow that person into who you are. Mm -hmm. She knocked it out of the park. She is the biggest mover up the ranks of who we think is a contender for Pete's heart. That's right. And who picked her to win it? That's not important. She's in my top five. Too early to tell. <laughs> so. All right. So then uh, moving on to the group day of the pillow fight, which I love Demi. I think she's amazing. So it's nice to see her even in a small. Can we have Demi as a friend of the pod and sure. bring her on? Invite her on. Demi, I... come on, friends of the pod. Please. We love you. Even though yeah. I didn't know who you were before tonight, because I've never watched The Patch. <laughs> <laughs> Same cool. We're educating him quickly. <laughs> uh, but I, I thought that that was like a pretty standard good date all up yeah. until... Um, it did seem like Sydney threw Eli under the bus because she lost and she was a little uh, butthurt about it. She was a little sour. I, I, yeah. I agree with that. And there were some, I mean, there were some elbows thrown in a couple of the matches. Some hair pulling, some wrestling moves. I don't <laughs> I know that that's that was how legal. Fights are supposed to go. No. <laughs> I'll make two points about the pillow fight. One, Fred Willard is old. He got old. He got old <laughs> he, in a he, man because he looked like. I mean, he's crap. been around for a long he's time, though. The last since Anchorman. Things have not gone great for Fred Willard. <laughs> Second point I want to make, and this might be a little controversial, Kelly, who we all kind of like Kelly, and we obviously know Peter like Kelly because we still don't know what went on in that hotel room. number one. But Kelly seems a little too good for this. She's got the little bit of a chip on her shoulder of like, you know, I'm, she kind of just wants to skip the the primaries and get straight to the general election is kind of what she seemed like to me. I mean, yeah. I that agree, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like, keep your head above the drama. I agree. Right? She's like, doing that. It's not a bad many... thing, but you can't just coast. Right. Either. Right. I didn't get that sense. I, I think she's fizzling out. He told her he told her on the date that he's really excited about this and she's one of the reasons. Yes. I'm not saying this episode was her demonstrating this fizzling I am. I think yeah. over the course of the next few weeks, we're gonna see her fizzle off. I mean, I think her, you pointed out that her and Peter do talk very well together and very realistically with one another, and that will shine through. But she needs to be careful. She's getting a little getting a little caught. I think you guys are crazy, and I think she's coasting straight through. Keep your head above the drama, and it'll work out. All these girls yeah. are just going to self-destruct with all the little drama circles that are going around everywhere, and she's the only that's one good. that's just, like, steady. I mean, not the only one, but one of the, no. the main... Well, there's enough that drama is. going on right now that it probably is in your best interest. If you're already in that kind of top five category, you don't need to make a big impression because everybody else is fighting and one of those two in a few are going to go home and we saw that tonight. Yeah, Speaking sure. of drama. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh, so much. Um, so can we get to my uh, segment? Absolutely. Because um, my segment of the oh shit moment of the night came on the group date. I was <laughs> shocked when Peter sat them all down together and called Sydney out in front oh. of the other girls and made her name Elia in front of everyone. Like, yeah. whoa, that was... Bad move. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. What do you guys think of that? One, Sydney didn't back down from it. She said it. She kind of stammered a little bit. But she, she didn't really leave her no. any room to not say it, though. But she, right. but she did it. Um, Eliza's hair looked great. I think we her her hair. Her hair looked fantastic <laughs> to the whole thing. Um, do we have a new segment? <laughs> her hair is really pretty. <laughs> um, that's all I had for them. Okay, but like <laughs> you don't watch. <laughs> <laughs> no, all right. So we, <laughs> we're going to move on from the hair comic. So we see this time and time again in in past seasons where during a group date, one of the girls pulls the bachelor or, or vice versa to the side and basically uh, starts planting the seed for uh, doubt and creating drama. And normally in that one on one conversation, they'll actually call a person out. Sydney chose not to do that. Maybe that was intentional because she didn't want to stir the pot too much, but just wanted to say, hey, Peter, be on the lookout. Some people aren't being themselves. The oh shit moment, you're spot on. The fact that he waited until everybody was together and then called Sydney out. She had no choice but to put a line on the chopping block. Oh, but he kind of put Sydney on the chopping block too, of really throwing her to the wolves, totally. pointing out who it was that said something. I mean, is this how you guys would would have handled this situation? No. I know that when I'm on dates with 12 women, that typically <laughs> don't roll like that. In your experience. Oh, typically don't roll like that. <laughs> you keep them all separate. You never have them in the same area. There'll be a it's later right. episode That's just of the podcast. That's 101. Look at the The 12-person Oh, day. Peter. We could give you some advice. No, he kept, he kept throwing gas on the stuff. And like, you Peter. pointed out later on like, during the pool party, he was doing the same thing. Well, look, yeah. Peter has the emotional maturity of a 15-year-old. <laughs> he continues to be incapable of we living love you, in the Peter, moment. We Peter, but maybe this wasn't the best way to handle that situation. But we've seen it in multiple episodes now. The, the last... Don't at me or comment. That... Please yeah. do. We I would love, love, would love for fine. the bachelor to But still, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Please add us. But this is two times now where he's had to walk away from these girls who are vying for his attention, who need the FaceTime to validate who they are to him. And multiple times he literally walks away. <laughs> yeah. Or handling the moment with Sydney. That was the inappropriate way to handle that. I do think that there have been other bachelor and bachelorettes that have handled these situations a little more gracefully than Grace. what Peter did. He yes. seems miserable. I said that yeah. multiple times. Oh. I think that was that was the other thing for me was that he couldn't bounce back from it. Like it affected everything this week. And I think there's been mm. other episodes or, or previous seasons where there's been some really legit things that would call for that level of drama and mm -hmm. what was throwing him off so bad didn't seem that heavy to me. I, I feel like he should have been able to take that and be like, okay. Tuck it away. I'll keep my eye on it and then, you know, move forward, whatever. You can't date 20 people and expect there not to be some drama within the group. They're all living together. It's inevitable. He should have been prepared for that. Okay, so what do we think about the fact that he uh, dramatically walked off in the rose ceremony and pulled an extra rose? So I think this is a good segue into my segment, which is overplaying your hand. Uh, if we think back to the pool party, Aliyah got the FaceTime that she needed with him. They had a good conversation. She felt so good about it that she went back to the girls, was laying out in the cabana, just loving life. And then he pulls her back in for a second conversation. She was overplaying her hand that entire time and did not see the writing on the wall when he pulled her away. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she was walking down their little hallway to their, their special spot and was all lovey-dovey, and if you are emotionally aware of other people at all, you'd see his face and be like, something's wrong. Right. Yeah. She, yeah, she didn't see it coming at all, and she should have. 
Yeah. She should. And she got daggered. Uh, was one of the things I was going to point out about my girl Victoria P. She laid the final dagger. Oh, oh for sure. Hundred percent. I don't hate Victoria for that though. She was no. staying. She was one of those ones that was also keeping her head above the drama. Mm -hmm. And Peter pulled her aside and specifically asked, and I agree with her that if you're being asked directly, I wouldn't lie about it either. So I don't. No. I don't fault her no. for that. I think that was totally fine. But I totally agree that that was like. The dagger moment. Yep. Yeah. It was. Uh, Victoria P's low point also came during the pool party. That bikini she had, not great. She, really? Like, they could have picked I up didn't a better notice one. the bikini. Yep, they could have picked up a better one for Victoria P. Yeah. Oh, she's beautiful. Well, can I can I also um, point out that you two just lost one of your top five? You did. So yeah. I'm still standing with my top five picks. Which, to recap. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Where are we? Where are we in the standings? So, yeah. right now, Ray is technically in the lead because she has all five of her picks in intact, which were Hannah, Ann, Madison, Kelly, Lexi, and Victoria P. Okay. Jake and I both lost a lion. We lost a lion. We lost, we both that lost her. Jake's four remaining are Madison, Lexi, McKenna, who had to sweat it out there at the end. It was and, a close call. And C. <laughs> and C. You lost two in one night, it wouldn't have been good. Oh. And then mine are Kelly, Hannah, Ann, Victoria P, and Madison. So, mm -hmm. okay. we're, we're in good shape. Yeah. So, the preview, though, for next week looks like maybe you guys might be resurrecting from the dead your fifth one. You know, when I saw her, that was my initial reaction. But the way that she just beelined it back to wherever he was told me that maybe she brought herself back, not Peter bringing her back. So, I don't think that she's coming back. I think she's doing this to just save face. I don't know if that's actually going to help or hurt. So, yeah, it might hurt. I actually feel like at the end she handled it with somewhat grace of being like, you know, it's a bummer that it was other people's opinion rather than something that I showed him. Which is true. So I thought that she, for the most part, handled it fairly well being kicked off. So I don't know that coming back is going to do her any favors. But. I, I, I had my own eye roll moment because Peter. After all of this drama, removing the rose, then goes back and starts doubting his decision. Mm -hmm. Like, come on. Did we get to your eye roll? We did. But it was good. Did, he, did you steal? He, 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 he didn't step them. He didn't okay. step them. We didn't okay. go. Got to the, the dust. So your, your eye roll was what now? Sorry. Was Peter's back and forth with oh, the yeah, lie throughout yeah, the yeah, entire yeah. episode totally right. where he was in and then Victoria dropped the bomb so he was out. Then he was back in and then they removed the rose so he was out. And then he's like, oh, maybe I want back in. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it brings us to the final special segment for the night, which is the Dustin eye roll moment of the night, where something happens on the show that causes me to involuntarily roll my eyes backwards <laughs> in my head. So, uh, a couple of points. Because it happens a lot. <laughs> We're more, sitting there watching. More it. often it's, than it, not. It really does. <laughs> so, 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 I do want to go. The eye roll moment. This is these are my candidates for tonight. That pool party was awful. I mean, that pool party yeah. in general yeah. seemed like the worst time. Ever, it was ever like plenty. Yeah. It must have been 55 bad. degrees. Everyone was still in their cover-ups. He didn't even hang out with anybody. Mm -hmm. It seemed awful. That's one. Uh, Aaliyah's, Aaliyah, Aaliyah's yeah. comment about being a pilot's wife, that was kind of eye-roll worthy when she was talking about how much she wanted to be a pilot's wife and all that. And my overall eye-roll moment. Just so he can be gone and she can do whatever she wants and be exactly. fake behind his back. But, but my eye-roll winner of the night is just Pete, it's Peter in total. Peter is miserable. I don't he doesn't like being there. He looks like I wrote this down. He was like a softer version of Vic, uh, Vikings quarterback Kirk Cousins. He just he just <laughs> looks like he looks like a just softer. He's like a sad, crappy NFL quarterback given a sad press conference. Like he just seems horrible. Oh, that was so. We so have yet rough. to go an episode without a plane being involved in these seasons. Yeah, that's so true. If we're thinking about Bachelor and the tie-in to Love Is Stupid, this is about your dating life. You need to get a pilot's license. I do. I'm close. I'm actually very close to having a pilot's license. We, we cover that in All several right. of our episodes. So one of our dates <laughs> needs to be you taking a girl up in the air. <laughs> yeah, it apparently works. Dustin needs to make sure he has a functional license before he takes any That's dates That's probably up in the air. a so, good idea. But yeah, maybe by the time we're done with this, I will. So <laughs> stay tuned for the backstory well, on that. Anybody that... Uh wants to date someone like Peter that has a little more emotional intelligence. By the way, I actually really do like Peter. I do. I like him. I think that he's sweet. He's tender hearted. Kiss ass. No, I do I like him. But he could handle things better. He needs to he needs to rise above the thirteen year old girl drama a little more. Yeah. Yeah. 
Don't let it affect you so That's much. That's true. He just needs to have the courage of his conviction, stand by it, and not do this waxing and waning. Agreed. It's painful. But then anybody who wanted to date Peter or a pilot can uh, hang out with Dustin. Yeah, sure. That's exactly how this guy... We're taking applications. Anyone who wants to date <laughs> our Nashville Bachelor and come on the podcast, let us know. One more thing. I do want to point out that uh, the Tennessee Lottery Cash for Life numbers tonight are 4, 23, 54, 56, 57 with a cash ball. I saw you writing it down. That's good. <laughs> he's like taking that notes all night throughout The Bachelor. We look over and he's writing so, numbers down. Did you buy a lottery ticket? No, I did not. Oh, right. so, oh so you really were just doing this were, for all of them. Oh, maybe we have some crossover oh. potential. People who watch our podcast also play the lottery. So there you go. Fair enough. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, you guys. Uh, the Love is Stupid podcast is premiering in less than a month on Valentine's Day 2020. You'll be able to hear the first three episodes on that Valentine's Day, and then we'll, we will be releasing one episode a week after that. We're going to be following Dustin on some of his dates. We'll be talking about the ways that he has met them, different dating apps or in person, and how you navigate all of that, the good, the bad, and the ugly mm -hmm. of the dates, and uh, just kind of love advice in general. And our slogan is we talk about everything from dating to marriage and all the stupidity in between. So give us a follow uh, on Instagram at the love is stupid podcast. Uh, you'll be able to pre-subscribe and the podcast will be available everywhere that you listen to your podcast. And we'll be back next week on Monday for another preview and our bachelor breakdown of next week's episode. It's sure to be drama filled. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm Ray Solomon, Jake Green, Dustin Summers. We'll see y'all next week. See you. Bye guys. Bye.